Hey everyone, welcome to the Matt Gamecast episode 27. I am John Carr, aka Wumpus, and with me is two new hosts, Mark Gregory and Adrian Gaucher. Gaucher? Gaucher. <laughs> Gaucher. Damn it! I knew we'd screw that up. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, I would like to, if you guys could just take a turn, just tell a little about yourselves real quick, and as new hosts on the show, if you don't mind starting first, Mark. Okay, uh, I'm Mark Gregory. Uh, I'm from uh, MattGamerHQ.com. I've been with the site about six months. Uh, been a Mac gamer now for about two years. So yeah, I thought it was about time that I got into a bit of podcasting. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. And Adrian, how about you? Yeah, I just started back up with doing this Mac uh, game journalism thing. I just started with MattGamerHQ.com as well. And yeah, and here you are. Yeah, here I am. Our fortuitous circumstance. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to have you here. And this is basically going to be a special episode on the Resed. What is it? Event game show. Res, Res game show. PC Res. and indie game show. But it did feature a lot of Mac and Linux ports as well. With, right. So. And that's held over in the UK, which. Yeah. Uh, Mark here attended, so we're going to be talking about that. So, Mark, how was it? You know, going to the show, which is primarily, you know, PC dominated, you know, as a Mac gamer, and like, how was that experience? You know, how was responses to either Mac gaming questions or presenting yourself as a Mac gamer? Well, a lot of the developers, to be fair to them, were were really forthcoming with um, with a lot of information about uh, about potential Mac ports. Even some of the bigger hitters there, like Ubisoft, um, speaking to some of the Splinter Cell guys, and they were quite forthcoming, as was some of the Sega guys as well, about uh, Company of Heroes 2. They were quite responsive about that after the good work that Spy did with the first game, obviously. So, nice. yeah, it was um, a lot of good responses, to be fair. That's good, that's good. I've never actually attended a game show, you know, as a Mac gamer. Unfortunately, I'm still trying to make it to PAX East. So, going in, like, did you expect to be treated differently or badly than maybe as a PC gamer, or maybe more difficult to access devs or anything like that? Or, like, I knew what- the, um, I, I I know what this is, and I know that it's a niche market, and I know there's limited coverage of what this can do. It's the same with um, it's the same, I suppose, with Linux as well. You know, right. PC will probably always dominate. As much as it pains me to say that, I'm a realist, mm. uh, and I understand that some of the bigger hitters, um, bigger hitting sites like um, Eurogamer and whatnot, will probably be shotgun. We'll obviously get uh, uh, more time with developers, but the developers know that when they're porting games, they need somebody to cover it. So um, they were all very forthcoming. Um, the guys at Ubisoft were really cool, especially when they were showing me um, the Mighty Quest for Epic Loot, which I totally loved, by the way. Even mm. though you know, I played it on PC, and they <laughs> couldn't they couldn't give me any information on whether it was coming to the Mac or not. Um, yeah, that game looked really cool, and the guy that I spoke to, he was awesome as well. He was uh, one of the devs devs on the team, um, and he was going through it in quite a lot of detail with me. So, yeah. Very everybody, cool. every, everybody was really forthcoming. It was, um, it was a pleasant surprise. Nice. I was, ex- I was expecting to maybe be heckled a little bit in the Q and A sessions, um, especially if I said, "Look, if I mentioned that to mention Mac or Linux, you know, which especially Mac with PC games can sometimes te- can sometimes be seen as a dirty word, can't it?" So you know. Yeah, for sure. But I didn't get that opportunity, unfortunately, because all the developer sessions were absolutely rammed. So mm. it's all good for the show, though. You know, yes, the, the show's been going. I think this is its second year. Um, I was lucky enough to yeah. go to the go to the show last year in Brighton, um, just as a regular. I did, yeah, I didn't go as part of pre- as part of the press or anything like that. So it's nice to see the show um, grow. It was still quite limited in terms of numbers, about thirty games, maybe maybe more, a few more. So it wasn't the biggest show. But it was uh, the content that was there was good, you know. Nice. 
Okay, there we go. I think I've got this. I don't want to get into hardware, but I have this new headset, and it's got this audio control unit that's insanely touch sensitive. And I'm always like accidentally hitting buttons on it and changing the settings. <laughs> so I just hit something and it beeped. And I don't know what it was. Anyway, I thought I might have changed the chat preset, which would have food read my mic. So I just wanted to be sure it's okay, which I think it is. So didn't want to derail that. But that don't sound any different. So. Okay, very. That's very encouraging to hear because, you know, I knew you were going in advance, of course, because you told me. And I was not like concerned, quote unquote, but curious, you know, very, very curious you know, how that response would be, because I'm still trying to go, you know, maybe I'm PAX East next year. But, um, you know, I, I do expect a certain amount of, like, well, you're just a Mac guy, like, who cares? But I know some indies, some people will care. Yeah. Well, well Go ahead, Adrian, sorry. Just beyond that, like, um, I think, I, I think the, uh, the old, you know, Mac gamers don't exist. Thing is is starting to kind of play itself out because you look into the console world, you probably have more support than Nintendo has had for like since they've released the Wii U. So I, I, I we're definitely moving up in the world, and I don't think we could write ourselves off as much as you could say Linux or anything. Apple's gotten so popular. Yeah, even the um, Ubisoft guys kind of like um touched on that they said like it's getting more popular so that's why they're looking into it more and more yeah Encru- and encouraging to hear and especially where I after live, like been no ubi games in quite a while to be fair so where i live i live close to the bioware studios and uh oh, really i can conti- yeah i continue to hear the guys talk they they really want to push ea to put things on mac because they all use macs there and they all love mac and really it's just a constant battle with EA because EA does, is, is not sure they want to invest just yet. But you, obviously, we all know that Dragon Age has released on Mac, both of them. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're definitely curious. They want to put more things out there. It's just a, a constant battle with your investors to say, you know, we can do this. Well, it's interesting because when Transgaming was first announced back in, I don't know, 2008 or nine or something... Um, EA was, like, the first people to use it, and they did a big push with Cider, like, six games, I forget them all, but I know they had, like, Need for Speed and some other stuff, most of it I wasn't interested in, but it was really cool, because EA did, like, a big push, and I think the sort of sad story there is, um, Cider was a new tech, and at the time it was pretty bad, and performance was, like, abysmal and pretty bug-ridden, and I think a lot of the games, or even all of the games they released, got bad ratings for that. Like, the games themselves were fine, but, you know, the porting was bad. You know, a few years later, now Cider is, like, pretty top-notch. It still has a few issues, but, I mean, we can run Max Payne 3, you know, on high settings, or I can anyway. Uh, or, you know, Skyrim, you know, can run flawlessly, though that's unofficial. No one's actually ported it. But this, the technology itself works very well, even on my three-year-old machine. Well, but and, you don't, and the apples have advanced because I think back in the days the apples didn't have the hardware to push, and we've kind of we hit <laughs> this bracket where hardware has been coming so slow that Apple's actually had time to catch up with where PCs are right now, and I think that's that's huge too because in the last three four years you've seen Macs that easily have the same baseline running settings as most PC gamers computers, right? So right. Yeah, that's definitely also there. Absolutely agree. Um, but it, yeah, so to continue my story, I think in EA after that, you know, they promised all a bunch of stuff and none of it ever came after that. I think it's because they saw, or whatever, the suits, the investors, whoever saw that either they got badly rated or didn't sell well and they just went, oh, well, let's not do that anymore because that didn't work out well, you know. Could have worked, you know, if they either tried a year or two later or worked or transgaming did a better job. Like, I can't point one single finger. I just know I followed it very closely because I was very interested and even tried one or two of the games. And it's true, the performance was bad. And, you know, um, they did go on to use Cider and other games that even, for example, like the Prince of Persia reboot in 2008, at least on the PC, I think, again, it came out on the Mac in 2009 or 10. It's a really great game, but the performance on you know, the Mac side is, like, terrible. I mean, it's a relatively, like, it's a really gorgeous game, so it's got a lot of graphics stuff going on, but, you know, 
like I played it on on a much lower end PC and wasn't even it was a friend's computer. Actually, no, it, it was my computer. My bad. It was a laptop at the time. But trying it on my iMac, which is pretty hefty, like it struggled, you know, because of it was cider. Um, I'm not trying to do like the Mac PC comparison, but just knowing like I can run other cider games, which are much more intensive than that particular port. And they run fine, but that, you know, Prince of Persia where it doesn't, just the technology took a while to catch up. But So now I think if EA did a push again using Seder, I think they'd be in a very good position, you know. I mean, obviously I'd rather do, like, a native port, but, what you know, I'm the kind of gamer who isn't that concerned. As long as it can get to the Mac and run well enough, or reasonably, you know, and not, like, be horribly buggy, like, I'm okay with that. Yeah, um, it, it's better to have an official you know, publisher developer backing as opposed to someone makes a wineskin of it. Right? Exactly. So, and there are wineskins of, for example, of, you know, the Mass Effect series, but they have a bunch of bugs and issues. So I'm like, I mean, I've already played them in boot camp, but I'm not desperate enough to like wineskin them on the Mac. I, I really am looking forward to, you know, like you said, an official backing. I mean, and they do have like a Mass Effect trilogy release now with a bunch of the DLC and stuff. Like that would be a great, that'd be like a super cool Mac release to have. Be the best. Yeah, it'd be the best. Because I, I mean, I think all the games are. Worth I don't it. see it. I don't see it happening. <laughs> I, I, I just, man, I just know Bioware it. really, really enjoys the Mac, and that's the only reason I think it's it's probable. But and that those games are made on the Unreal Three engine, which is now which you can now port to the Mac. So you know, <laughs> you would you would, you would think that they would do that, but hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't see it personally. I don't see why they would. A- anyone listening to the Gamecast, just start. <laughs> Spamming, uh, spamming EA's Twitter saying you want this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I am a ginormous Mass Effect fan. My, uh, my Same. buddy and I at the time when we were playing it, and I think it was 2008, or end of 2007? No, it was 2008. When it came out, we renamed it Crack Effect because we got so addicted to playing it. <laughs> that, <laughs> it was a Mass actually... Effect. It was just Crack Effect. Mass Effect 1 was the only game I've ever called in sick to work to finish because I couldn't <laughs> stop playing. I've never done that with any other game, and I'm a huge gamer, but I just, I'm just i very responsible. That's mm. the only game I said, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick. <laughs> I'm dying, bro. I'm dying. Is that, yeah. is that Sound of Aliens being shotgunned in the background? No, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's that's my alternate personality <laughs> kicking in from this horrible infection. <laughs> yeah, no, I would, I, at the time I was working alternate work days, and I had installed it first, and I actually called up my friend at work. I'd, I'd been playing it for six hours, I'm like, dude, man, I just installed this game, it's so awesome, I've been playing it for six hours. He's like, what? <laughs> Get out of the computer. It's like, no, it's too awesome. Okay, bye, I'm going back to play. And then, then you know, he came, he came later. We were living together at the time, he's my roommate, and then he got addicted to it, too. Yeah. Great yeah. Anyway, so yeah, hopefully we will see more from EA. I think it's a really good time. I'm not saying we will. I'm just hoping we will, much like Adrian said. And I know everybody's well, everybody's, everybody's seen seen the frostbite stuff, haven't they? You know, everybody knows mm-hmm. that the hiring. Yeah. You know, and now they have Origin there, so you it's know, obvious they, that yeah. they have the desire to port, and they have companies like I said, Bioware, Maxis, who always they <coughs> want to put things out there, so. Seems By stupid that, that they wouldn't port day. though. You know they've got people like um, who's the guy? There's a guy who's really good with the wine, with wine, and you know you'd you'd think that somebody would just jump on the forums on the wine skin forums and see who's in the know around there. You know and expect some of these companies like Ubisoft or EA and some of the big hitters that aren't quite sure what to expect and you know and they're just looking to dip their toe and maybe bring I don't know like the first Mass Effect or a Dead Space game or something to officially be supported by them but they just hire maybe a couple of these guys just to play with the port and see, see what they can do with it you know that, that to me that would be a good, make, be a good business decision from them you know, they don't have to spend too much money sure they have to uh procure the software and license it and whatnot, but for five or ten percent of the cut, you know, and the potential sales, what they could drive from that, it's not, you know, just to test the water, it's, it wouldn't be a bad business business practice in my opinion, you know. I, I think they're very worried about keeping their hands clean. That's why they use like cider ports all the time. Mm. And I think they're gonna they're eventually they're gonna have to bite the bullet and actually hire people and I, I guess EA is if it the rumors are true about the frostbite engine. But 
Yeah. There's lots of great people out there. If you look at uh, goodoldgames.com, they hired the guy who made Boxer, which is simply just a, a DOS box for Mac. And now they have a whole selection. They've basically opened up games that, that we never even saw on Mac when they came out back in the day, and they're now available for you to purchase, and, and they run great, right? So they're really losing out by not hiring these people because there's definitely people out there with the knowledge but they just want to, you know, throw a little bit of money at it and, and let someone else take care of it. So I think they should bite the bullet, but will they? I don't know. I, I think they they might be just too big for it. So I think a smaller company might end up taking advantage of those kind of people. Rockstar have done the same, haven't they, this week with releasing Max Payne, haven't they? And by mm. the way, what a, what a mess that is. <laughs> well, you and you and Rick, Kevin, have, or no, this other guy, the other guy at Control Command Escape, have been having a hell of a time. I mean, I had my own hell of a time in the very beginning, as you saw me documented in our group chat. Um, <laughs> but after that, like, it's been it's been smooth sailing for me. Um, that that port is a car crash at the moment. It's horrendous. Yeah, but it's bad. I'm getting screen tearing, and my 360 controller with the drivers doesn't work. My my left trigger does my right trigger. My select my sele- is it select on the control pad? Is it? Mm. Uh, the back, the back button. Sorry, does um, does the quick time events? They're all they're all it's, reversed. Oh, it's horrendous! It's I like, hear- how did that get through Q and A? Like, really? I'm the thinking. Sp- sorry, go on. Keep ran- keep ranting. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, no, I'm only running it. I'm running it at like 720p on like the lowest settings, and I'm getting screen tear. And it's like, really, really. Mm. <laughs> Do you have an NVIDIA or ATI card? I don't remember. ATI. Oh, that's odd because the people so far have had. Um, poor performance issues were all in NVIDIA cards, so I was suspecting maybe it's somehow better optimized for ATI and not NVIDIA. It's um, not constant. It's not constant screen time. It's just, it's there, you know. It, hmm. it happens, but, you know, when I'm running stuff at minimum, you know, minimal settings, I'm only on like 720. Um, with your rig, because you do meet the recommended, or at least quote-unquote minimum requirements they have. Um, so what's your cards? Uh, your 512, right? For memory? Yeah, seven nine six. Yeah, but he has like a yeah. he has like a pretty new like ATI card. You know, mine's three years old. It has double the memory, but it's three years old. His has like more power. I mean, mine is quote unquote more power, but his has like newer, better features and more I've got like, like twelve. Mm, yeah, I've got like twelve well, gig of RAM and an i five. Got a quad core i five, so, so we like should, two point five gigahertz. So we have basically I, the same system. Sorry, go ahead, Agent. I mean, if, 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 if I had to compare to other games that are out there and what they're like requirements are there's a lot of like really small crappy games that are asking for 512 and when i think of max pain you got these big open world environments where you know if someone dies they drop a gun and whatever else but like i could see it demanding a lot of a lot of video ram but i mean it does even on the pc but i don't know i mean from for mark's setup the game should run better at least i mean in my opinion maybe Maybe the game just really wants, you know, a gig of RAM to run well, video RAM, and it's that DirectX 11 stuff. I'm telling you, that's what it'll be. <laughs> that's what it'll be. <laughs> we want OpenGL 4.1. God damn it! And yeah. now we want it yesterday. Just, no, just, I mean, I, just fucking I, give it us. I do want to talk about this a little more than hop back to Res because we've relatively got off track, but this is related because Max yeah. is a new release. But I mean. Is very much an example how not to launch a game on the Mac. Um, tra- okay, no one knew if it would be cited or native, right? You know, of course, yeah. there's always speculations. But it's been speculation for months. Yeah. It's been the worst one of the worst releases. That was kind of like the day before. Hey, guess what's coming out tomorrow? Yeah. So Rockstar yeah, tweeted on like the 19th a tweet, <sighs> just a tweet, a short little tweet, absolutely nothing else. Max Payne 3 releasing for Mac tomorrow on the App Store. That yeah, was like, thanks, it. thanks, guys. And that's a and, good way to drive sales. Yeah. So there's no posting anywhere, any news outlets, anything. Just some nine to five Mac or something picked up on it first, and then you know it went around to the Mac sites and you know the bigger PC gaming sites and stuff. But there was no push, and, and you know, of course, people downloaded it and then figured out it was Cider. Trends Gaming made a press release the day after on the 21st, like a full 24 to 30 hours later. Oh yay, yeah, we released this. You know. Max oh. Payne 3 released using Cider. It's like, really? A day late? It's, they need to get that act together. Um, big was, time. Yeah, it was Least pretty poor. EA releases a Cider port, they release it on the box, like, day one, right? So you know it's going to have Max Yeah. 
Um, so it was just, it was pretty poor all around, and obviously there's some issues with the game, like, either whether, I think some of the bugs are carried over from the PC, some of the bugs are new and related to them, you know, being used in Cider. Um, Rockstar didn't even bother to get where you could buy the game right, you know, they, they said it was only App Store, like, only, and next thing you know, everybody's saying, oh, it's coming up on my Steam, you know, and it, I got it, I'd already bought, bought it on PC, I got it in a Steam sale a while back, so. Well, because I wanted to play it, so and, and so I obviously installed it on my Steam Steam version. But you know, why they, they didn't even bother to get that right, you know? Yeah, I actually, they probably just don't have the knowledge themselves. What that it's not that it's, that it's Steam play. Well, they don't do it right. Trans Gaming does, and if I had to put any bets towards who put the money into it, it's not not Rockstar. It's Take Two Interactive that does it because they're the ones who are pushing all these games out on Steam and, and Steam Play, mm, right? It's, that's but, a very but it's their game. But it's point. their game. It's their IP. They have to take mm-hmm. care of it, you know. Mm-hmm. But they don't touch any of the code. They just hand it over basically to their publisher, and the publisher takes it to. Cider, but they, but they, they still stand to make money. It's still a business investment for them. Max Payne Three was still their investment originally. Absolutely, but it's more like money on the side. Like I know it won't be a great deal of money, but I still think you should support. Station. Yeah, I still think you should support everything, no matter what platform it rolled out. On. Well, they should. I, I see Adrian's point in that how it could have been overlooked, or just their complete lack of knowledge in releasing something on the Mac. You know, is definitely a factor. I, you know, you see with quote unquote. But every fair you know, all somebody's got to do is say, "Dude, is it going to be on Steam?" Yeah, okay, awesome, because we know what Steam is. Yay, Steam. <laughs> I, 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 can't even, I can't even get that out of Ubisoft, so to expect that from anyone else is, is absurd. No, I mean, I tweeted, you know, Rockstar, um, you know, the day, a good day or two before asking a few questions, and I also emailed them their press release, like, hey, can I get some more info about the Mac version, this and that, and no, no response, so... Um, Thank you. I guess I guess we're lucky we got a tweet out of them that it was releasing, and it didn't just get released randomly. A solitary tweet. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, there was definitely a lack of info, and it was it was I would a semi botched launch in a semi botched port. Um, That's kind of the story of being a Mac gamer, though. Mm. I, I I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty used to like day one games being. All right, uh, this thing's completely black screen. We'll talk to you next week. Mm, I can't say. <laughs> the Witcher. Yeah, but we're talking. I mean, in talking about emulated or, ra- or not emulated wrapped wrapped games, yes, anything from Feral or Aspire or a bunch of any any indie dev, really, no. I mean, okay, what was it? Lone Survivor. I got a black screen, but the guy released a patch like you know the next Dude, day. Sam Witcher. Yeah, but again, <laughs> Witcher. The Witcher one was using wine skin and Series Sam three. Mark and I did talk about this in the last podcast. Um. Well, it was an unofficial podcast, which he didn't get introduced on, which is why I had him introduce him here. <laughs> and he released it as like this little side episode or staff talk or something. Anyway, um, discussion. Yeah, like because we were we were talking about you know what's a native game and porting and this and that. And yeah, Serious Sam Three launch. I you know I got that for review for Inside Mac Games, and it was totally porked. You know, it was kernel panicking my computer and stuff. Um, but they're a completely new dev to Mac. They tried to do a native port, but it was horrible, you know. So hope you know they patched it and stuff later, and that was fine. Um, but in terms of you know, I think the the point of the discussion here specifically is you have the devs, either people like bigger ones like Feral and Aspire or virtual programming or indie devs who actually know what they're doing on the Mac, and you have PC slash console devs or let's just say multi platform devs. Who have, don't know what they're doing, releasing games on the Mac either natively or in wrappers like Wineskin or Cider, and those 99.9% guarantee something's going to be wrong with them. You know, so I, so you know, I I don't really agree with you know as a Mac gamer, I'm used to it. I mean, you're used to it in context with some of the games, but I think it's because we're seeing more and more new devs coming to the Mac, but they're using these shortcut routes to get there, which sometimes work and sometimes don't. Usually don't. <laughs> That's well, my opinion, anyway. I, no, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm just saying we. I think as Mac gamers, we have a higher tolerance to that sort of thing. We're just yeah. more happy to get a game. Whereas mm. if you look at you know Diablo 3's launch or Sim City, and the way the gaming community just went nuts and said, "Give me my money back! I don't ever want to touch your games again." Blah blah blah. I think Mac gamers are like, "Okay, just just fix it. We'll we'll wait it out." 
I'm really excited to play your game when when it's ready. <laughs> it's true. There's <laughs> definitely a higher tolerance PC community is. It's. I mean, I I can see why because. And I mean, I'm somewhat of a PC gamer as well because I boot camp and I follow like six PC gaming websites. Yeah, but because um, they're they're involved from like day one, they're involved like because the games get announced like a year in advance, and they're following all the media and all the interviews and the shows and the demos and like I think they get a lot more heavily invested because of that, and I would too. Yeah. I was them, or well, I am quote unquote sort of them. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, and then at that point, after so much interaction and hype and previews and advance reviews and blah, 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 or whatever, and something doesn't work, like, there's a lot more outrage going on. I mean, that's just my theory as to at least one of the reasons why, you know, they demand, or in a sense, they can demand, they can demand better because they can, because they're bigger, because a lot of PC devs very much respond to their audience. I mean... I mean, the Mac devs do a bit, but not nearly as much. Maybe because they can't, maybe because they won't. It, it is a bit of an issue, and it's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, a lot going on there. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that some more. We certainly can. Well, Otherwise, we got Res going on. Yeah, so that's what I'm about to say. There's we lots of content here. 20, so. 26 minutes in, we've skipped about 20 minutes which talk about other great stuff but let's get back to res so mark you must have seen a lot of cool games i had a few here on my list i wanted to ask you if you may have gotten your hands on okay hit me okay here's the punch are you ready for sir you are being hunted that was awesome. I got I got a lot of time with a developer as well. Um, one of the the, the lead uh, des- game designer, uh, a really nice guy. Um, he was dressed all in tweed as well. <laughs> oh, really? That <laughs> he, is so yeah, awesome. That, that they were all dressed in tweed. They looked the part. They oh. were funny. They were witty, and they gave so much information. They even had a uh, a keynote session at the end of the day from five until six p.m., which was held up due to uh, technical errors with the project Eternity. Uh, uh, keynote session before, but yeah, um, those guys were really awesome, and that game looks awesome as well. It looks a little bit like War Z, but with like robots instead of zombies, <laughs> and it's a uh, FPS. You can't toggle between third person and, and first person. Um, I've got right. so bucket load of notes here. So it's like open world oh, survival. survival, yeah, and basically like stuck out. I don't know where, like, it's meant to be geographically or fictionally even. Uh, right, so the game's made on um, Unity, so mm. um, there's five five islands, and each island is um, randomly generated within the engine. Oh, I so love nothing, nothing, nothing stays the same, so the layouts are always completely different. Nice. Um, and the aim of the game is you're given, like, I think it's a shard, I think they said it was, and, you ha- and around the island is um, parts of the shard, and you have to build the shard up to escape to escape the island. And, right. there's, um, and there's boats which take you to other islands to s- search for the shards there as well. It's, um, <laughs> it's a really interesting concept. Um you can deploy a lot of different tactics as well. So when you start out, obviously you've got no weapons or anything like that. So you're um, you're scavenging within buildings and schools and churches and whatnot, trying to s- search for weapons. And the robots um, attracted by noise and movement, so you kind of have to keep low all the time when you're around robots or keep keep into the woods because, as I said, they're tracked by vision. And whatnot, and they're attracted by vision. Um, so you can lure them in. So say you have like a bottle. So you finish your drink, get your health back up. You can throw the bottle to make a noise, and you can set a trap. So there's like bear traps that you can set and things like that. It's it's really cool. And then you can loot the body, and then then you've got a shotgun or something, you know. Right. When cool. you're being hunted by these robots that are dressed in tweed. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, are they all dressed like? English gentleman or whatever. English gentleman. <laughs> so I asked him loosely about the story, and he said, "Dude, the, to be honest, dude, there is no story, really." If I'm being honest with you, he says, <laughs> you need "It's a story. just." <laughs> it, it says, it, "I just asked." I said, "So what's the idea behind this, and what's going on in this world?" And he kind of says, mm, "So robots have kind of like taken over, thinking that they're humans and wiped out humans, and it's yeah, and you're just trying to escape." 
Um, and this is just the playground for you to escape. Just think of it as something as simple as that. It's just good old fashioned fun. Nice. Um, each playthrough will take you about f- five to six hours. So, he says, um, with it being randomly generated, um, each world's completely different each time. So, that's what brings back the player again for replayability, you know? Very it's being cool. released on uh, PC, um, Linux, and Mac. And he said that, surprisingly enough, PlayStation have also been in touch with him as well. That's interesting. Uh, but he says he's not too sure where that's going to go because of the control scheme and whatnot. You know, there's mm. only so many buttons on a controller, isn't there, you know? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, surprisingly not, a lot of the games that I did see there that are supported by PC, Mac, and Linux were all to do with the Unity engine. Well, and I think that's... the way to go. Yeah, because obviously it gives them the most platforms to push out on if you develop on Unity. Um, even the Project Eternity guys were saying with the um, old engine that they were using, I forgot what the engine's called now that they used back in the day, mm. on Baldur's Gate. Um, I have yeah. it in my notes here. Uh, but anyway, they said they had to build the back end into it um, and they mentioned Unity, so I can only assume that they built the Unity back end into their engine to allow them to you know, port the games to yeah. PC, Mac, and Linux as well. I, I kickstarted Project Unity and I'm pr- or Project Eternity, and I'm pretty sure uh, in their main video they discussed using uh, Unity so they could get multi-platform. Hmm. Right. On that on that topic, I don't know how you guys feel about Unity, but Unity uh, so far that's the Infinity engine, a... by the way, that they use originally. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. I was just going to say I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but. So far, the releases on the Unity en- engine for me have been fairly uh, disappointing. So I kind of worry about this turning into another kind of cider effect where they're just using this and not testing so much on on their Macs. I don't know what, what Do you mean performance-wise. Um, you wanna... I, I played a couple games right off the top of my head. I remember one of the first Unity games that released on Steam was called Oil Rush. It's still <clears> on there. It's an RTS and it looks so great when I watch the videos. I don't know if this is so much because of the Unity engine or just because the game itself wasn't that great. But it was prob- I played for probably an hour and I turned it off. Like I just everything was really choppy and I run a pretty high end Mac. Everything was really choppy, everything was really slow, and I I did not have a good experience with it. So I haven't had a lot of play with Unity just yet. And obviously these developers are, are are much bigger than the people who did Oil Rush, but I I don't know how well its future is in compared to something like uh, Unreal, the Unreal Engine, which the games that we have got from the Unreal Engine have been I don't know about you guys, but for me they've been really really well done. I mean mm-hmm. everyone loves Killing Floor, right? So mm-hmm. you know, well the Unreal Engine I mean has always performed oh. well. Perhaps I mean some people argued back in the day when it was released in you know ninety nine that the Quake engine was better, which it was for probably a lot of things. But um, you know it was used for the first Deus Ex and like the horror game Undying and a few other things at the time. Um, but you know the UE engine does have a long history on the Mac, um, and I've I've had fine experience with Unity games. I haven't specifically played Oil Rush. I wanted to, but I never ended up getting it. Missed it in the last Humble Bundle. Don't do it. Um, but I can't think of any Unity. I know I've played several Unity games. I can't think of the names, but I've never had yeah. an issue with performance. But I agree. Like obviously, not obviously. At least in your experience, you know, I haven't dug into Unity, um, like the community or like in general. But it's something I'm planning on doing. Like I've had the game, the Unity 3D site open, like in my in my browser save to like dig into more. But um. I, I mean, I'm looking on. I'm looking forward to it because it is becoming more multi-platform, and people are using it to create like bigger and better games. Um, you know, I haven't had a bad experience with it, but I definitely believe. You know, aside from you, there are other people who have these. You know, ne- more of a negative experience. So there's some cause for concern. Well, and, and I'm not saying it's a bad engine. I'm just saying I wonder. Like I said, I mentioned that it might become more of like a cider port where people are building these games on their PCs inside Unity, and then they just you know click a button and it converts it to Mac for them, and they don't actually. No, play no, test that's it not the case. You know? from, from the developers that I spoke to, they they were very aware that they had uh, some performance uh, tweaks, so we say, to make in the back end before they could um, 
That's officially, good. officially um, say that the Mac version and the Linux version uh, would, would be ready. You know, mm-hmm. so obviously the PC version would obviously get optimized first because that's where the base model comes from, and then, and then maybe uh, f- shortly afterwards um, they'll be cranking on the Mac version. You know, mm, well maybe for example, Oil Rush was a niche or a case wherein you know uh, it wasn't well optimized, or they put very little work into it, and therefore you know it ran badly, stuff like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's just not a lot of experience out there with kind of the newer uh, 3D running Unity engine. But from what I have had, it's been a bad experience. But right. if, if what you're saying is true, as long as they're 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 not just plugging it in and play testing it, you know, or, or plugging it in. And, and I'm sure the unit the Unity the Unity engine's getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time with each update. You know, so I'm sure there's plenty of um, optimization going on in the background. I'm sure they've got like a, well, and a Mac team and a Linux team working on. On the port, on, on the, well, uh, the coding end, uh, in that respect, you know. Yeah, and that's that's more or less what I'm saying. It's like you can't build a game 100% on PC, click a button, and launch it on Mac, and expect it to work just because because the engine supports Mac and it has this conversion program. You have to actually have hired staff who have experience mm-hmm. to do this, and I think a lot of people, especially people on Kickstarter, because it seems like Kickstarter is really pushing games out here to be launched on Unity because they go, oh, well, I can get this on Mac and Linux and appease all these people on Kickstarter who say they'll they'll pledge as long as they make a Mac version or a Linux version mm. and just build it in Unity. But they've never actually, they, they've never turned on Linux or Mac and they don't know any of the workarounds and they hit a button and they <laughs> launch a game and then they wonder why people are upset, you know? Well, there's plenty of people that are available on Twitter, would be my, you know. You only have to do a bit of homework and a bit of digging on Twitter to find out there's plenty of people with plenty of knowledge around the Mac operating system on Twitter. Yeah, but I totally agree with what Adrian's saying, and it links back to what we were talking about earlier, wherein there's all these new devs going, oh, hey, the Mac's a platform now, let's support it, but they they don't seem to really know what that means in technical terms. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. So we're seeing, you know, more and more Mac releases, but some portion of them are, you know, badly optimized or poorly ported or whatever, you know. Well, um, let me take this as my opportunity then to put my hat in the ring and say, you want to send me a build? I will test your build. I agree. You like that <laughs> well, that, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I was going to say specifically for, like, Sergio being hunted, um, you know, I'm going to email them and ask if I can do some sort of preview build or, you know, maybe get a guy on the podcast or, you know, write a preview, preview video, whatever preview something, just talk about the game on the Mac, if that's yeah. possible at this point in time, or when it is. Oh, they mentioned multiplayer as well. Uh, for that game. Okay. So it won't be purely single player. They, were, they said they're in talks with some networking guys about the potential of um, four, four player co-op. Oh, we should dig um, in and see if that's he, did, he didn't mention actually whether it was co-op or can like competitive multiplayer where you're competing for all the shards, you know, because there's only so many pieces of the shard within the world. Hmm. Yeah, right. so that's why they could only go up to four. And I think that's a nice number as well, you know, so... Yeah, it's a bit standard. Standard number. That's cool. Okay, I think we should move on, because we do have some other games to talk about. Um, I know you are trying to get an interview with the Space Hulk guys. What happened with that? I turned up at the booth at my slotted allotted time. Uh, I was watching some gameplay. Um, the guy, Thomas, I think his name was, Thomas Lund, came back from another interview, and there was this other journalist... Um, tapping on his shoulder saying can I get some time here can I get some time here and Thomas was like I've kind of got another meeting and I didn't want to interrupt the conversation that they were having Thomas looked at his laptop and then, and then says let's go get some lunch then and I was like oh really so I <laughs> spent the whole of the night previous to that pretty much like before I went that, out that Mac Gamer HQ and went oh Mac Gamer I don't even need to watch this I know I don't know where the other guy was from but I don't know where the other guy was from but I don't know. I can only assume that it must have been... It's okay, we'll make them public enemy number one. I know, and I was so pissed, and that (laughs) really demotivated me, because I'd, I'd, like, spent all night, all the night previously preparing my questions, because it was going to be, like, my first interview, so I really wanted to make a good impression, and I totally got blown off. 
And then I went to get some lunch, and they were sat opposite me at lunch. Uh, <laughs> so I just, I was just sat there eating my lunch. Did, thinking, did you at least give him like a very birds. evil scowl for the entire lunch hour? <laughs> no, no, I kind of just sat there and smoked for an hour and played Warhammer on my iPad. So, <laughs> so like, no, but I, I understand that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You know, maybe I should have been a bit more forceful and jumped mm. in. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll answer my questions via email. You know, or maybe. As a way of an apology, we could get him on here or something, you know, so that'd be quite cool. So I don't, I'm not up to burning any bridges or anything like that, you know. Things happen, you know. Mm. It did kind of put me on a bit of a downer, though, but then I kind of picked myself back and thought, right, stop sulking. You've been a knob. So just get on <laughs> with it and go and go and find some other games to talk about. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about somebody else's game. Yeah. Stuff, you know? Did you, I'm curious, did you get a chance to look at Hotline Miami 2 at any chance? I did, and I got a chance to play it. <gasps> <gasps> Such a, <laughs> such a fan. Okay, because I know I sent you some questions to ask. I don't know if this question's got I couldn't got get asked. time with anybody. Okay. I couldn't, unfortunately not. I'm sorry. Their We're, guys were, like, totally swamped all the time. Yeah, I figured. But did, um, I mean, have you played the first game at all? Like, can you compare it, or was that your first experience with Hotline um, Miami? It seems very similar. There's maybe a few more options. In the options menu, you can do a little bit more. Um, Gameplay-wise, it's pretty much the same. Uh... The sound was turned off, so uh, I didn't know whether there was like cutscenes with voiceover this time or anything like that. You know, so. mm, I doubt it. But I, they're supposed to have a totally new soundtrack, which I'm excited about because I'm yeah. Like a, I bought the soundtrack like on iTunes from the first game or from Steam. Everybody or... goes on about that soundtrack. It's, it's, it's a great nice. soundtrack. <laughs> At least I think it is. So I'm excited about number two. I mean, I heard it wasn't like hugely different, but it had a few more options in terms of like environments and weapons and the mask system and uh, new music and obviously new levels. That's good enough for me as a fan of the game. And, you know, well of a Mac port, so that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, um, let me see. Um, I know you, there's, a, there's a bunch of other smaller indie games that were there. I know you got to look at Ethan Meteor Hunter, which you said was uh, a load of fun. Oh my god, I loved that game. That game was like my game in a show. After all the big AAA games that were there. So, well. what what is Ethan Meteor Hunter? Can you tell us about it? Um, it's a two D uh, puzzle platformer. You play as um, he's a mouse or a rat or a rat. I can't tell. I think it's a mouse. And he's in this world which is ever changing, and um, you get to use powers like telekinesis and things like that to change the environment um, and to slow down time to move things. It's it's really in depth and really surprisingly good. Because I was watching it, I was like, this looks so much fun, and then I got my hands on it. I was like, this is so much fun. <laughs> nice. So, so it's like a two yeah. D puzzle platformer, basically. Yeah, which uses physics uh, that serve both as a it uses a lot of game physics, you know. Mm. I ended up breaking the physics at one point because <laughs> <laughs> there's a there was this part where you had um, with um, uh, some steam vents and there was a box and my box <laughs> had slowed time, slowed everything down, put the box where I wanted it, and then released it, and then my box ended up just bouncing around everywhere, and I was trying to get out. Oh, it's just craziness all over the screen. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. A yeah, that's, that's a popular genre, and we're definitely seeing a lot of more interesting entries, um, you know, over the years. But ex- even now, like, people are finding, you know, creative or, um, you know, still unique ways to create games in that genre. Some of them are a bit similar, but that one that one seems cool. There's also, um, what was it called? Luminesca or something like that? Yeah, I managed to get a hold of a beta build or an alpha build before the show, which I got to play. Ah. Um, I didn't play it at the show, I just watched some people play at the show. It seemed um, There was kind of like this a tunnel um, at there, and there was like just wall-to-wall really small indie games, like really small. There was like ten, 10 games down this one tunnel, and this tunnel was just constantly rammed, and then I got to the end of the tunnel, and uh, at the end of the tunnel, the reason why it was rammed is because there was a Oculus Rift headset there. Mm. So I know the queue for that was just it fucking enormous constantly. It was huge constantly. So I was like trying to squeeze through, trying to get a look at, um, trying to get a look at a Luminesca and trying to talk to the developer. Didn't manage to do unfortunately, and um, but I managed to get see some more of the game. Um, reminds me a lot of Limbo, but underwater maybe. You know. Uh, it's interesting, and it, and it, and it, and for the price that you'll pay in the humble bundle, which I think is about four dollars, it's really worth picking up. 
so if you've got if you've got a couple of hours to kill and you mm. want to play like a fun game, you know. So just... Luminesca is in it. I know it's not like two D puzzler, but it's all set underwater with lights, like a light yeah, base. Yeah, it is. So you and... use lights to solve the puzzle. So I don't know. You like some sort puzzle. of diver or something? I couldn't really tell when I looked it up. Yeah, yeah. Some. I think again. I think that's made in Unity as well. You know. So. Mm. Um. It's, it's one one man development team. To be fair to him, so right. done a, he's done a real stand up job, you know. Yeah. Fairness to him, I think it's his first game as well. So he's on green light. He's still waiting to be green lit. As is um, Ethan as well, uh, Ethan Meteor Hunter. So get on to Steam green light guys and get these these games green lit because after some time wasters, then these are definitely uh, well within that bracket, you know. Yeah, I, I did go and, and plug that on Greenlight. Um, I'm just going to run through a list of names here. I know we're at the show. Oh, well, they were supposed to be. They're on the Res website. Um, if you've got to look at them, Ether One. Um, yeah. Go Home. That, that game had the Oculus Rift attached to it. Oh. And then, yeah, it was crazy. It's just craziness around that booth. That they were down like... that little tunnel, so they only had like two systems, one mm. running one running uh, the Oculus Rift and then one running the game. Um, they had all of their team there. Uh, didn't really manage to grab much time because their booth was just so busy all the time. So, you know. Yeah. Looked like a pretty unique uh, puzzle game in terms of the game mechanics. Like, yeah. they are restore and you can, like, culture the environment and, like, reality more or less. So it seems it's pretty interesting. I think they've just been greenlit as well, if I remember yeah. rightly. Yeah, or they're either on greenlit or they just got greenlit. I'm not sure which. I didn't check. Yeah, it's been, it's been greenlit. Yeah, so uh, I'm just on the green green light page now. It's been greenlit. Right. Nice. So that's another good one to look out for, definitely. Mm, go home. It's like, uh, I guess, what is it? Semi horror? Maybe it's not horror. Maybe just exploration. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to see oh, that okay. one. Okay, it's like a oh yeah, it's like a story explanation uh, exploration game set in like some old house. Uh, I guess that's not. I guess there's not much to say about that, but it is coming up. Yeah. In Mac. Sorry, uh, um, <laughs> that's okay. I'm just trying to cover another things. Uh, there should have been some more notable people there, like Introversion with Prison Architect. Um, yeah, they we, were part of a Q and A. Yeah, really um, quite quite voiceful about their hatred of publishers, which was quite mm, funny. They always have uh, been, yeah. Yeah, if they didn't get one of the one of the awards because they won some awards. They were like, I don't know. They they said they um were like fuck fuck publishers or something like in a big yeah. audience. It was like whoa. Yeah, no. um, <laughs> I think the term that they used was F and C's. Yeah, so I don't they, really don't want to they, be that vulgar. Yeah, on here, no, but, you know. I usually avoid. <laughs> not, I mean, I'm not averse to language. But generally, we don't like curse a lot though you know sometimes it's amusing um but yeah they definitely i think they're they're a really cool bunch of guys i've been a long time fan of all their games um and i'm gonna segue into i was thinking of uplink like a hacker game but there was actually a game there called hacker <laughs> yeah there was yeah yeah which was pretty much just mash your keyboard to pretend that you're hacking <laughs> the movie ha- the movie hacker simulator game is what the website describes it as does it yeah, it didn't seem much more else than just a face meets keyboard bash, personally. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea, let's put it that way. Uh, mm. I sat and watched it, people play for 10 or 15 minutes, I didn't really get what it was about, so kind of moved on. Right. Focused on, I, I only had so much time, I was a one-man band there, so I tried to yeah, focus on, course. you know, get on games that, you know, that we're going to... That took my attention. Yeah, self, that's which is that sounds, you know. No, no, you have to. I mean, there's no point really in covering a game you have no interest in. It's going to be boring, boring coverage. Um, did you get a chance to look at Gun Monkeys? Can't even say I saw that. To be <laughs> well, it's supposed to be there. It it's was. Just... Uh... Sorry, go ahead. No, no. Oh, well. I, I'm looking at the schedule myself. I'm going to ask him about another game. So. Mm. I'm gonna have to get on the Res website very quickly. <laughs> well, I I went through their whole well, like every game on their website. So. Yeah, I did that as well before. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, just dropped my uh, dropped my iPhone. Oh, they, don't bounce, they don't they don't bounce well. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I've been I've been asking Mark a lot of questions. So Adrian, please feel free to inquire. Uh, yeah, I was just I was looking at the schedule here for for Saturday. I noticed uh, Dreamfall chapters on there. Did you get a chance to look at that at all? I don't know if anyone 
you're as familiar with the uh, the Siberia series or that developer at all, but I am. I'm familiar. I never played the games, but I'm. I've you know I'm familiar with what they are in their history. Yeah, I just <coughs> uh, I have played one of the Siberia games. It was very frustrating. Very frustrating puzzle game. <laughs> mm. But um. It was exciting when I saw the the Kickstarter that they were gonna try and bring it back over to Mac, and I did notice even on the the Mac Game Store right now there's a sale on their very old original game. I can't even remember what the name is, but it, it's it's exciting that they're gonna start coming to Mac. I mean, obviously there is a good market on the Mac for point and click adventure, so that and RTSs, yeah, of which Rome Total War Two looked. F- Flipping incredible, by the way. Right, that was there too. Yeah, and they did like a developer session, and the, one of the guys that was speaking to me was super cool. He just like gave all sorts of information about that game. Um, didn't really know, didn't really manage to talk to him much about the Mac, a potential Mac port, because obviously I think Feral have dealt with their ports previously, so I can only imagine that. That would be something that Feral would be interested in in the mm-hmm. future with their ties with Sega, but that game looks awesome. Like, seriously cool. And I'm not a big RTS guy, but that game really impressed me, and I was like, mm, I might have to dabble at this, you know. I got, I managed to play um, towards the end of the day as well. I managed to get some time with it. Yeah, it's really, it's really impressive. Visually as well, the water, oh my god. I can't know I shouldn't have just be mentioning <laughs> something Some, like the water. I, I remember when like, I played this was so and I good. Saw the water, I was blown away. So I mean, now we're way I ahead of that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. What I saw the water, and I was like, oh my god, that's like from some of the best water I've seen in a video game ever, like in the sea. Um, because so, now you have to manage your land and sea at the same time. So if you focus too much on the land. You're gonna get fucked over in the sea, but then if you focus too much on the sea, you're gonna get stumped on the land. You know, so you kind of have to flip, filter between the two quickly, making your decisions. You know, and it was really, really good. Nice. Really impressed. And the guys were like super energetic all the time. There was a lot of them, and there was always somebody available there to talk to you. You know, they were telling me about all the new features which have that which have got coming to the game and whatnot. So I'm really hoping that there will be a Mac port in the future. Multiplayer was, was they're, all, be... they're all seems dedicated to bringing a lot of their games over, so it's you know a likely possibility. I have no actual info or be confirmation, co- but yeah, there's going to be co-op and one. Um, there's going to be co-op and one-on-one multiplayer. So yeah, well impressed. John, did you uh, did Just... you get a chance to go to the Frozen End Zone panel at all? Uh, I, I have Frozen Synapse. I haven't actually mm. turned it on, but oh, I no. didn't. Heard some very good things about it. We should totally. I... Well, I <laughs> sorry, I never actually did a review, but I you know actually bought it because it looked like a really cool game. I think I still have an extra copy in my inventory because it, I like bought it, pre-ordered, and gave you an extra copy, or maybe it was on release. I forget. But it's a very cool game. Um, definitely deserves like you know if you're into that style of game. Anyway, like. It's kind of like what how do I don't know how to describe it. Like Rainbow Six meets I don't know what, um something. <laughs> I missed out I missed it's, out on that, damn it's, it. It's, it's like that's, uh that's too bad because cause Frozen End Zone is like the similar kind of tactics game, but I guess it's a football game that's turn based. That's already official coming to Steam and for Mac, so Cool. I, don't know I just want to put out that. there that all the keynote sessions from the whole weekend, so if you go to www.res.com and you were interested in seeing what sessions, what keynote sessions were available, they're all available on the Eurogamer YouTube channel, because they were all live streamed and they've all been recorded and uploaded. So they're all available there if you, if you missed anything, if anybody's interested in any of the sessions. That's just a quick impromptu plug for somebody else's YouTube but you know it's something that hopefully <laughs> mm. something that's um, interesting for uh, the Mac community so mm-hmm. uh, we had a few other big games I'm just going to mention I doubt you got time like Planetside 2 is supposed to have a Mac port sometime I know they were at the nobody show nobody from Sony there because I was so ready to jump on them 
Mm. Like, why are you ditching us for the PlayStation 4? Really? Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I know no, there, was... there was there was nobody there, and I've sent them tweet after tweet. I've sent them emails about the potential MacBooks. I know mm. on um, on um, IMG last year, sometime before the release, I think their Sony CEO, um, I forgot his name now, said in a Reddit Q and A session that there would definitely be a Mac port for the game. Um, it would take a little bit of time, uh, but mm. he wasn't he wasn't thinking anything longer than maybe a couple of months. Well. It's been over six months now, so you know I can only assume, unfortunately, that again, again, we're we're not going to get it, you know. Maybe not, but hopefully we will. Um, that's some other things we're not going to talk about. Like there's some other games that have been out a while, indie games, but they were there anyway. Like uh, Revenge of the Titans. I mean, that was out in like 2010 or something. So yeah, yeah all that the puppy w- games there, Titan Attack. Yeah, yeah, right. Puppy yeah, games. that was uh, yeah. Uh, Droid Assault, those are all puppy games. Yeah. Mm, uh, another like 2D physics game, capsized. I know that's been out a bit. Um, and what else was there? The Gun Monkeys game, which is like some deathmatch multiplayer game, which I think you play monkeys and run around and shoot each other. <laughs> that's coming out on Steam, though, soon. Steam Play. Um... Surgeon Simulator is on there, too. Right. Project Zomboid was was out. That that was well received. That booth was always really busy. Hmm. Oh yeah, I looked that up. It's like a like an open. I think it's another like open world, somewhat randomly generated like zombie survival game. Yeah, yeah, like, it is, yeah. More emphasis on survival, not like zombie slaying. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that 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 booth was always like really busy. There's always plenty of there guys to talk to. I just stood around and watched you people play at- for a bit. You look at Democracy well, Three at all because that's pretty much a definite Mac game as well. Didn't see Democracy Three to be honest. No. <laughs> okay. As I said, I spent a bit of time sulking. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fan has spent so much time sulking. I could have seen some of these games. <laughs> fair. That's fair. Uh, one game that I did get to sit down and play, which mm, I suppose might be Mac related, is Wildstar. I mean, if if anybody's a boot camper. Oh, it was a new MMORPG, which was which is due to come out soon. I asked them about obviously Mac ports. They said due to the limitations of their engine, which is always the case with MMOs these days, that they might not be able to make that happen. But their community manager didn't want to dismiss it completely. So. Right. Fan- um. Fantasy world. Mm-hmm. So art styles reminded me some of the assets in the art world. It kind of the way that the world's generated kind of reminded me a bit of Borderlands in a way. It's kind of like Borderlands meets WoW as you would expect with an MMO. Mm-hmm. But the the color palette that they, that they used was like really bright, really vibrant. Um, I really enjoyed the the combat. There was, seemed to be more of an emphasis on combat than there is with any other. MMOs that I've played before, you know, it, it looked fluid, it felt fluid when I played it, you know. Uh, the six different classes, four races uh, that have two factions, so there's like Horde and Alliance, kind of. Um, I can't remember the exact terminology for the uh, different factions, but it seems to be, you do, do a lot of cool stuff with it, let's put it that way. There's a beta available now on the website as well, so. If anybody's looking for a new MMO, so cool. I'm not an MMO guy, but I like to hear about it. Yeah, I know it's not completely Mac related, but I know a lot of people do boot camp, don't they? You know, I know I do. So, mm-hmm. so sorry. Go go, go, no, I'm just going through the list the same as you are. So, mm. <laughs> um, basically, the, the the two big ones we haven't really talked about yet, at least I can't remember us talking about it, is Team 17 and, and Ubisoft were there. And obviously, Team 17 had, I don't know, I don't even know, Super Frog HD and Worms Clan Wars, so those are potential Mac release. And then Ubisoft, I know we were talking earlier about uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist and being a possible port for Mac for sure after uh, Splinter Cell Conviction. Um, Team 17, those guys were so 
active at the show and they were all really approachable and really funny because I was just making notes at one point and some dude run up to me from a Team 17 t-shirt and says, dude, you need these stickers to put on your notebook. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Because I was like writing something and walking around with my head in my book. He goes, dude, you need these stickers. And he gave me some worm stickers. So I was just, just made me smile, you know. And uh, yeah, and then they had this giant worm rolling around the... Uh, rolling around the show creeping up on people which was quite funny and seeing people turn around and utter shock with like this worm there and he was going around and hugging people randomly he, it was yeah. it was a lot of fun like what you'd expect from like a, a worms team you know hmm. clan wars looked looked good I didn't get managed to get any uh, hands down time with it um, said hello to a couple of people there uh, they just said at the moment it's going to be PC exclusive um HD Frog, I think, has a potential Mac port in the works. But with the Worms, uh, Clan Wars at the moment is going to be PC exclusive. I would imagine in future they will cross platform that, you know. Yeah. There's only so much money you can make on Worms games, isn't there, you know? And um, you need to put it out to as many people as you can, so. Well, and we've been seeing most of the games now, too, so. Yeah, because you're reviewing. Which Worms game is it you're reviewing at the moment? Uh, I believe it's Revolution. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's Revolution. Mm, it is, yeah. The new one. That's not been out too long, has the it? The last one was Reload, and this one's Revolution. So How is that so far? Uh, like somebody who hasn't played a Worms game since it was maybe 15, you know, so if, apart, if from, my, if like apart worms, from my iPhone. You're going to like Worms. I, like, it's, it's hard to expect any more or less, right? And I think that's why it, they're branching out. That's why I'm curious about this, this Super Frog game. Yeah, Worms is Worms, and it's just kind of an upgraded version. I'm enjoying it so far, but I love Worms. I've had a long history with them. I remember when I had a Dreamcast, that was like one of my favorite games me and my friends would play on Dreamcast. So, mm-hmm. Cool. Nice. As I said, I didn't, I didn't get any time with the with the HD... I forgot what's the frog called, the frog game. I Super forgot. Frog HD. Super Frog HD. I didn't get any time with that, unfortunately. Um, I was too busy running, running around and going to keynote sessions because I did get to sit in on the one with uh, Project Eternity. Nice. Uh, if you that, the- that was the queue for that, by the way, was flipping crazy, like stupidly long. Uh, I think they could fit 400 people in the hall, and b- with about 40 minutes before the show was due to start, it, it was pretty much done. You know, you, there was no nobody else allowed to queue, and the hall was pretty much empty. Crazy, and the amount of love that uh, that they got, was, even though they made us wait like an extra half an hour, <laughs> was was nuts. Honestly, um, it was something really cool to be a part of. Nice. Mm, the, so, um, pretty much the only the last game I'm going to mention. Chris, is the, Chris that? Avalon. That was it from Project Eternity. Mm. That was it. Yeah, he was so funny. So he had people of tears because he knew his time was against him <laughs> so he was just like yeah I've made shit loads of RPGs a little game called Fallout and you know mm-hmm. K- KOTOR 2 and he was just skipping past everything he was going on about um, how with the Infinity Engine how they've managed to, to change it now so you're not just on colour palettes you know you're not just on a palette and running through the screen so you can make uh, so the water's now um, real with particle effects and you can see the uh, the wind go through go through the trees and go through the bushes and you know uh, they can make uh, streams and lakes now um, mm-hmm. fill up and, and decrease with water you know constantly it was it was really it was really yeah, interesting that, that was more of a, that. Like they a talked about their development demo. process as well yeah they talked a lot about their uh, development process as well it was really good yeah game. those are on YouTube I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, I didn't back Project Eternity, though I backed a lot of other RPGs on Kickstarter. Um, you know, um, The Wasteland 2, um, The Banner Saga, uh, The Torment remake, or sequel, or whatever it is, the new Torment game, and one or two others. Um, I haven't... I mean, I'm a fan of Chris Evelyn's earlier work, not really his later stuff, but... Um, I don't know. I've backed quite a lot of games on Kickstarter. I have a limit. I mean, to the amount I can back. 
Okay. Um, so that one was already absurdly funded, so I didn't really feel the need to chip in, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, it got like nearly $4 million, I think like 3.9 or something on Kickstarter. So I was like, yeah. Which is a lot for Obsidian, I would imagine. They're, they're, yeah. fu- they're fine. They don't need my, you know, 10 or 20 bucks at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, the other one I backed was Divine Divinity. Um, I- I've actually been talking with those developers for <gasps> Divine Divinity a lot. <gasps> yeah. We must uh, talk more. Um, oh god, I'd, I'd have to go through my, my log. Well, maybe, I don't think we should do it now, because yeah. we're already running over an hour, but yeah. <laughs> I'm making a note, I'm going to... You're, you're my new best friend, all this time. <laughs> Just saying. I backed that project as well, and I actually gave them a real hard time about um, a lot of incentives on Kickstarter. A lot of the incentive of doing a Kickstarter is saying, okay, we'll give you beta access, but there's never any beta access for Mac users. It's a PC-only thing. Yeah, that's and a I pretty said, prevalent you, thing. Yeah, you can't you can't try to coax me into backing your project with something that I can't use, and you can't coax me in by saying, "Okay, well, if we get four hundred thousand k, we'll make a Mac version, and you're at a hundred thousand k, and you want me to pledge." No, not going to happen. Mm. You either decide, you know, right now that we're going to do a Mac version if the money's there, or we're not going to do a Mac version. Don't set a goal because Mac users aren't going to to pledge in the fact that they might get the game. They're going to pledge that they will get the game. So, uh, definitely a conversation to be had there about Kickstarter and, and the Divinity guys, because they were great to talk to, because I had a really long conversation with them on Kickstarter. Yeah, we could we could probably have a Kickstarter-themed episode soon enough. A lot to discuss there, and from a, lot of, from a number of different ways. Um, so I think we should start wrapping this up. It was a pretty great episode um, covering a lot of Reds things and talking also about EA and a bit about Cider and Wine and the launch of Max Payne 3. So I think we had a pretty nice current episode with a lot of things going on and great discussion for next time. You know, anyone listening, you know. Um, Sorry I couldn't contribute more on Res. I obviously <laughs> we weren't there, right? So Yeah. Oh, no, it's... <laughs> I always I always brought it kinda of, the conversation a little sideways, but it's it's all I could really do. It is all very good conversation. <laughs> Much appreciated. So, you know, anyone listening, feel free to, you know, post comments on the episode or ask questions and uh suggest topics, uh developers, anything you want to see or hear is always fun to hear some feedback from the community. Uh, but that's all for today, and we'll see you next time. So, just uh, quickly plug my Twitter here in case anyone's interested. I Go for it. Nobody's hero. So that's Adrian. If you want to give me a shout or you got a question for me, I'm at nobody's hero on Twitter. Go ahead. Awesome. A quick plug from me then. I'm uh, on Twitter. I'm at mgregory666, and uh, don't forget to check out macgamerhq.com. Yes. For latest news and reviews and previews. Everything Mac gaming. <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> I'm at Mac Gamecast on Twitter. Oh, shock! I know. <laughs> let's get come on. Let's <laughs> let's get John some love on Twitter, guys. He's he's sitting lonely on less than what thirty friends, or thirty mm, followers. I so. don't know. It's not that many, but yeah, it's yeah. So I come on, yet. I'll get on let's, that. yeah, get some. Shit. God damn it, Adrian. Let's get get him some love. You know, Man, I've done zero person. networking for my Twitter whatsoever. I've just like, Twitter's awesome for that. Tweet. Yeah. I just tweet like random stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I'll be focusing on that more. So yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Awesome episode, and we'll be talking soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.